This is a 28storms.com tropical weather update on this Sunday night, October 21st. And as we begin with the latest Hurricane Center outlook, you can see that they have highlighted two areas. Of course, we're still not concerned about the one in the central Atlantic as it poses no risk to land. However, as we work our way into the central Caribbean, the Hurricane Center has raised the 48-hour window for development to 70%. This evening's visible satellite imagery shows little in the way of convection near the low-level center, but you can make out that low-level rotation to the south of Kingston, Jamaica, and we need more convection to develop closer to that low-pressure area for it to strengthen. The low is still very disorganized with much of the convection occurring to the east and north of the center, and that is the result of some southwest vertical wind shear ahead of a very powerful trough that we see anchored out across the western Atlantic and southeast Gulf of Mexico. However, there is a fairly good consensus amongst the models that the shear will begin to lessen and we should begin to see tropical depression and tropical storm development before the low passes over Jamaica, eastern Cuba, and eventually on into the Bahamas. The following is the latest 18Z GFS run solution and initialization of the vertical wind shear and it correctly shows a lot of westerly flow across Jamaica and Cuba which is unfavorable for tropical cyclone development in those regions. However, directly to the south, we have this very small upper-level anticyclone, which is favorable for development. And this ridge is forecast to begin extending a little bit more toward the north as we work our way into 48 and 72 hours. And this is the general time frame that the low will be passing over the Greater Antilles, more than likely as a tropical storm. And as we transition into days 3 through 4, we could very well have at least a tropical storm moving into the central Bahamas. And today the models have shown a bit more of a favorable pattern beyond day three for the storm to potentially become a minimal hurricane. But the latest run, this is the run that you're looking at, the 18Z, it still doesn't look like the most prime condition for strengthening into a hurricane. We've got a lot of vertical wind shear immediately to the west in association with that upper level trough. But there have been a few models within the past 24 hours suggesting that we could see a bit more in the way of intensification and this is something that all interests across the Bahamas will have to watch very closely. As a matter of fact, as we turn to the 300 millibar level, which is closer to your average jet stream level, you can see that trough still anchored across the southeast gulf and west Atlantic as we saw on the water vapor imagery. This trough is forecast to generally persist there for another 48 to 72 hours, and then we see another reinforcing shot coming out of the southeast United States, and this orientation of the trough is going to make all the difference with regards to the intensity of our storm once it moves into the Bahamas. And quite frankly, this forecast is just a little too extended. We're talking three to four days before the storm even arrives in the southwest Atlantic, so we don't want to get into too many details about the intensity because there are a lot of question marks. As a matter of fact, there's even more question marks regarding the intensity and strength beyond days four and five and beyond the storm's forecasted stay in the Bahamas. And I'm going to show you two very distinct scenarios and this could make all the difference for interest across the U.S. East Coast. What you're first looking at is the 12Z run of the ECMWF model, and we don't really see much in the way of model disagreement within the first 48 to 72 and even 96 hours. They pretty much all agree with at least some type of tropical storm formation with a lot of heavy rainfall and tropical storm force winds spreading across Jamaica and even western Hispaniola, eastern Cuba, and the Bahamas. But as we go into day five and day six, once the storm is in the southwest Atlantic, this is when the forecast becomes really tricky because we've got a long wave trough out across the central United States. And depending on the orientation of this trough, along with this minor little bump here, which is some modest upper level ridging trying to take shape out across the western Atlantic. And finally, if that weren't enough, we also have to deal with this very powerful long wave trough out across the central Atlantic. All three of these features are going to help determine the exact strength and path of our developing storm system. And based on this model solution, as we go on into day seven, the storm is beginning to phase with this non-tropical trough, the one moving in from the Midwest. And if the orientation is just perfect en enough, you can get one of those rare situations where the storm actually begins to intensify as it becomes a more hybrid type of storm. It starts to transition from being purely tropical to subtropical. And if you pay attention to the central pressure here, we're talking about a sub 970 millibar low moving into the Delmarva Peninsula. And this would provide very heavy rainfall, potentially hurricane force winds, and this would be an overall very devastating storm for the U.S. East Coast. However, all is not doom and gloom this evening as there is another just as likely scenario, if not more likely, 
And even with this European model solution, you can still make out that this long wave trough is a very potent one situated just to the west of the Azores Islands. Now, if that trough dives a little bit more toward the south and west or is just a little bit stronger in this run, then this low would more than likely not phase as clearly as you see here. And it would actually just simply get moved out to sea toward the northeast and really not have much of an effect on the U.S. East Coast except for maybe southeast Florida at least initially because as we stated even if it's just nothing more than a tropical storm situated just to the east over the Bahamas there is still going to be a fairly tight pressure gradient across this region and South Florida is going to have to deal with a strong easterly fetch which could result in some very strong easterly winds and some beach erosion and dangerous rip currents so all interest basically from South Florida northward through the entire US eastern seaboard needs to monitor this storm very closely but this is the different solution that I was just telling you about and this is the 18Z run of the GFS, and it's a little bit more potent with the trough out across the central Atlantic, and it's in just close enough proximity to our developing tropical storm that it tugs our storm more so toward the northeast and away from the U.S. east coast, so the phase with the troughing out toward the northwest just never happens, and the storm safely moves out to sea with perhaps some minor impacts along the island of Bermuda. But nevertheless, this would certainly be a much safer solution compared to the full-out phase that we just saw being advertised by the European. Again, if that full-out phase happens with a developing tropical storm or hurricane that is starting to make a transition into becoming a hybrid storm moving into the mid-Atlantic states, that would be a much more devastating scenario. But just as a reminder, we're still a long ways off from seeing anything overly significant on the satellite. As a matter of fact, this is still nothing more than a very disorganized area of low pressure, and until it forms, we're still talking about nothing more than just potential but one thing that we are fairly confident about is that once again over the next three to five days interest out across the central greater Antilles can expect a lot of heavy rainfall and dangerous flooding could begin to develop especially across the higher terrain and interest out across the Bahamas should be bracing for tropical storm force winds and those could be working in as soon as within three to four days and even across southeast Florida especially along the coastline even with the low situated just to the east you can still expect some pretty strong easterly flow to deal with and anything beyond then, it's still just too early to tell, so all interest across the U.S. East Coast, just keep an eye on this system. So that's all from us here at 28storms.com. We're going to keep you updated with the latest on the models and such on our Facebook and Twitter feeds, along with more video updates, and the next video should be posted no later than tomorrow evening.